Alright, welcome to another YouTube video. Um, we're in London now, we've been here for nearly a week now. Yeah. Um, it's Saturday morning and it's nice and fresh. Uh, we've just driven for about 30 minutes to get to where we are right now and we're about we're some lessons. Yeah, half an hour early for our lessons. Yeah, so we asked uh, our um, followers on Instagram if there'd, any, there was anything that you wanted to ask us um, We haven't really done that before. I know a lot of people mm. do that on Instagram But we thought we'd ask the questions there and then answer them here So we're gonna take you through our day and answer them as we go as we go Yeah from different places in London. We don't have time to answer any right now We have to go straight into our lesson, but we'll start as soon as we get out We met through the dancing community. Um, we actually had very similar teachers at the time, and well, mutual teachers. So mm -hmm. we uh, met through the studio, and then we started dating. Um, and then we happened to be looking for partners at the same time after dating for about four or five months, and mm -hmm. we just felt like the right decision to dance together as well. I can't say that I've experience this personally. I know that teachers can often be quite hard to um, try to try to build you up. Um, so I think if your coach is, uh, if you know that they have the right intentions in mind, maybe you need to take it on board as con constructive criticism. But And not, not take it personally. Yeah, yeah. Ob obviously you need to um, have a really good relationship with your coach and they need to be positive. I think your team needs to be positive around you. So if you if it is affecting you pretty negatively, I think you should you should speak to them outside of the lesson about how it's affecting you because maybe they just don't realize. Uh, we actually we both danced Latin in previous partnerships uh, and quite for quite a long time as well. So we were both um, relatively high level Latin dancers I think. Yeah, we're we both were, in open category. We were we were okay Latin dancers. Um, <laughs> but I think Speak for yourself, I was great. <laughs> <laughs> but I think um you kind of get to the point where uh, not everyone is like this, but we felt that we would benefit more focusing just on one style. Yes, there are lots of things you can do with breathing actually. It can really enhance your performance. Uh, we think about it a lot actually uh, and I'd suggest that you pick the places in your routine where you feel you're not breathing and uh, choreograph them in so um, decide when you're going to breathe in and then when you're going to breathe out um, within the choreography that you have it'll it'll help a lot Thank you, um, we're glad you enjoy our dancing. I think most people find that they'll get more bad results than good results. Yeah. Um, there's only one winner, right? So yeah, there's only one winner and the results are also out of your control. So I think, you know, as the results are obviously very important, but you just need to keep trying to do the best that you can. And focus on the feedback from the people you trust. So your coaches um, and your partner, that's what I would try to do. I think you absolutely can. Jonathan and I uh, have both completed our bachelor degrees and uh, competed at the same time. At times it was very difficult, uh, especially when it's exam time or you have a lot of assignments coming up, those type of things, but um, it's all about time management.
So we're back at the apartment now. Um, we've just had lunch and a little bit of a rest in between our lessons for today. Um, it's kind of nice to have some quiet time, but we're gonna answer a few more questions before we head out to the studio again. So that's actually a really good question, and we actually do most of our final simulations and also quite a bit of our practice by ourselves, and it, it can be quite hard to find the motivation. I think one of the first ones is definitely to choose inspiring music and maybe loud music as well. I think that helps us get in the mood. And also to set really clear goals for the final, whether it be performing or achieving certain energy levels or whatever. Technical think, aspect. Yeah. yeah. That really helps us. I think the biggest part of preparing for a competition is, and preparing for nerves, is to get on top of them before the competition. So be as prepared as you possibly can. Practice all the things that are worrying you. Um, make sure that you know what you're doing. Um, and set realistic goals for yourself. I think that if you go into a competition knowing what you want to achieve in yourself, then you have more chance of having success. Uh, yes, we are. We're really looking forward to dancing at uh, the UK Open. It's going to be our first major competition in London, in England, as professionals. So, yeah, we're really looking forward to dancing. Uh, it's funny because I think every new dress that I get becomes my favourite. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. this uh, yellow RP one I have is definitely my favorite. Um, I designed it from the start with the materials I wanted. I wanted those big stones. Um, the yellow is just perfect. I haven't worn yellow in such a long time. Um, yeah, so for sure, for sure this one. And I think it's also a really special dress because it's our, our first professional costume. So definitely this one. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I think um, if you don't have a dream and if you don't have a goal that you're aiming towards, there's probably not much point to keep going. So I think the fact that we're still competing and still dancing together uh, shows that we have a goal. Um, it's always, I think you can have lots of different types of goals, like just to improve all the time. Constant improvement is a really good goal. Uh, this is the case for most amateur dancers actually and even professional dancers. Um, I think the key to uh, dancing without a lot of money is that making sure that you're investing in the right things. So making sure that you are committing to lessons with people that you really respect, um, with yeah. teachers that have your best interests at heart and really um, utilizing those lessons. So if you don't have a lot of money to spend, spend it really wisely, go into the lessons, really be switched on in the lessons, take notes and practice Practice, practice, practice everything they've given you. If they've given you 10 different ideas, practice one um, for a whole, a, whole, uh, a whole practice session, then come back, practice the second one, and really dig deep into what, what you're given. There's also a lot of uh, free uh, dancing content out there on YouTube yeah. and other platforms. Uh, obviously, you have to be careful that you're not trying to do things that you're not ready for, that are maybe slightly above your level, but I think... You know, there is a lot of value out there that you can get for free as well, so, yeah. you know, utilize those resources as well. Uh, I think the, the funny thing about dancing is that we're always striving to be consistent, but the truth is that it always feels different. I think every day or every time you take up hold, uh, it always feels different because, you know, our bodies are always changing. Um, I think, you know, the goal is for it to feel relatively uh, efficient in that you don't want to have, you don't want to be working too hard unnecessarily, but dancing is a very physical, um, very physically demanding art. Um, so you have to be working quite hard, but hopefully in the right ways. It's funny you took that question completely different to how I would have taken it. I was actually think? thinking about it from the perspective of someone who's never experienced dance. Oh, okay. I Which see. is another yeah. way of thinking about it. I mean, if you haven't experienced dance, it is 
just something so unique that I don't think you can really explain until you've done it. I so. think, yeah, the, from that point of view, it feels better the better you get. <laughs> yeah. So like at yeah. a lower level, you learn steps and patterns and it doesn't really feel very great. It doesn't feel very nice, but you kind of need to have those foundations first. Um, and then when you start to dance with a partner, dance together and produce things together, it feels much better. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't say I have a favorite dance, to be honest. Um, I think it changes depending on what we feel. We, yeah. We're doing better, so like sometimes, for, for a while we thought that, you know, Foxtrot was maybe our, our best dance and we really enjoyed dancing Foxtrot, and then, you know, eventually Tango felt like a really good dance for us, so then we really enjoyed yeah. practicing and dancing <laughs> Tango, so I think... I'm it, enjoying Tango at the moment, maybe that's the answer, I don't know. I like them all though, I don't have a favorite in particular. Yeah, I think you have to love them all to dance. To dance them all really well, mm. you have to really love them all. Yeah, and in terms of a, a favorite song, um, I looked at my Spotify in review <laughs> in review list for last year, and turns out the em the Empress Orchestra was on my <laughs> most played songs in the entire year. That's the, so that's the band that play at Blackpool Dance Festival. So yeah, looks like I enjoy listening yeah, to their music. We, the most. we always practice to to that particular. That music. Yeah, just because it's such full music. Uh, we've actually been wanting to compete in America for a while now. Um, there was a question there before about um, not having enough money to, to do things, and you know, it really does come down to you can't do everything. Um, money and time. Money <laughs> and time, so yeah. I would love to compete in America, um, and hopefully, it'll happen soon. Yeah, I don't, there's no really cure for jet lag. I mean, we have a very long flight from Sydney to London, for example, mm. to get here. And it's two long flights. So we have to be very um, smart and when we sleep, I think it's important that we sleep and we try to adjust to the new time zone. And quite often we'll even, a few days before we leave Australia, we'll start to slightly change our sleeping habits. So we'll go to sleep very, very late. As, as late as possible to try to get into the new time zone a little bit early and that helps us a lot but really uh, it's pretty tough. I hope you've enjoyed this video it was really interesting to see your questions actually I don't know that we got to all of them I think there were over 40 maybe yeah, you got to 50 a lot of questions. Uh, so uh, a couple of them were a little bit repetitive so hopefully you got some answers through that but we might try this again at some point and cover cover some more questions but um, thank you for posing them I really enjoyed uh, thinking about them and and uh, seeing Jonathan's responses and my responses we look forward to seeing you in the next one we have uh, a f another week left of um, training and lessons here in London before um, we dance the Universal and then we dance the UK Open uh, the, the few days following that so um, we will keep you posted with what's going on with that. Please subscribe because we will have more videos coming from London. Thanks.